Carmen Winstead. It was a humid Indiana June when the students of Adams Central High School were gathered along the road behind the complex for the final fire drill of the year. It was hot, noisy, and downright miserable. The teachers were so focused on fanning themselves that they hardly had the time to keep an eye on the students. Because of this, they never saw the group of popular girls closing in on poor Carmen Winstead. Carmen was always a little bit off. She was quiet, kept to herself mostly, and didn't really have any friends. Because of this, she made an ideal target. Whether it be the influence of the smoldering heat, or just the rot in their souls, Ashley Ryans and her gang of friends had gotten it into their heads that it would be a great idea to pull a cruel prank on Carmen. One of the girls had managed to pry open the nearby manhole cover, revealing the sewer below. The heat had made the smell rancid and they nearly gagged as they pulled the lid back. Another girl went to the teacher responsible for watching their area and began to make a ruckus, claiming that she thought she was suffering from heat stroke. While the teacher and the general populace were distracted, Ashley and her two friends grabbed Carmen and threw her down the hole. They burst out in laughter, waiting for the splash to echo out. However, they were horrified to hear nothing but a loud crack resonate from below. Hearing this, the crowd began to panic and the authorities were notified. A hush fell over the crowd as a policeman descended into the sewer. A few minutes later, he slowly emerged with a crumpled form in his arms. It was Carmen. Her neck was snapped, leaving her head laying limply at an unnatural angle, and her face was bloody, bruised, and almost entirely smashed in. Because of the hot summer weather, the sewer had been almost completely dry. Carmen impacted face first into solid concrete, breaking her neck and killing her instantly. Upon questioning, Ashley and her friends stated that Carmen had tripped and fallen in. No one else had witnessed the event, and there was no evidence to prove otherwise, so the police believed them, and it was written up as a tragic accident. Or at least, they thought no one else had seen. Several weeks after the tragic event, 16-year-old David Gregory received a disturbing email. Someone had emailed him the disturbing image of a mutilated girl crawling out of a sewer hole with nothing but a cryptic message. She was pushed. David, however, knew exactly what this meant. He had never stepped forward, but he had seen what those girls had done to Carmen. He was scared, so he kept quiet, but he knew. He immediately exited from his email and closed his laptop. It took a while for him to settle his breathing once more. Obviously, it was some sick individual from his school making some kind of morbid joke about the event. David decided it would be best to take a hot shower and try to forget about the whole thing. He let his tension ease away as the hot water ran over him. This was definitely what he needed. He closed his eyes for a moment, but immediately opened them again when he heard a strange sound. A faint, gurgling sound began to echo throughout the bathroom. The hairs on the back of David's neck stood on end as he tried to locate the source. 
The gurgling got louder and louder until David realized that the sound was coming from the drain. Thick, rust-colored bubbles began burbling up, slowly filling the tub. David leaped from the shower and ran to his room. He threw open his laptop to see that his email was once again open. To his horror, he saw that the image had been forwarded to everyone in his contact list. He began to panic, and his mother soon came up to check on him. It took a long time, but she finally managed to convince him that he needed to get some rest. It wasn't until two in the morning that she was awoken by a loud cracking sound. She ran upstairs to find no trace of her son. Nothing but soggy, rust-colored footprints that started and stopped out of nowhere. The police found David's body the next day. He was in a dried up sewer. His neck was broken in an unnatural angle and his face was bruised and smashed in. Over the next few months, there was a string of similar deaths sweeping across the state. Nearly everyone who had been forwarded the image had gone missing only to be found dead in a sewer a few days after receiving it. However, a few people did receive the image and managed to survive. They stated that they had forwarded the image onward with the caption, she was pushed. It seems as though anyone who receives the image has a set amount of time in which they need to forward the message with said caption. Those who fail to do so are met with a grisly fate. Carmen is angry, rightfully so, and she is hellbent on everyone knowing exactly what happened to her. Should you ever receive this image, it would be wise to forward it with the declaration, she was pushed. Always better to be safe than sorry. Right? The Breakdown This urban legend is still fairly new, and has become quite popular recently. It can be traced back to 2006, where it was first found circulating MySpace and emails. This legend is a prime example of a true copy pasta in having the primary goal of being spread as far across the internet as possible. There are many different versions of this particular story. In some, the image comes in the form of a text message. In others, it's a post on the wall of a social media site. The ghost of Carmen is said to come for you from a sewer, the shower, or the toilet. It's even said that she'll come for you while you sleep and you'll wake up in a dark sewer where she'll be waiting for you. Research has been done on this particular case in Indiana, yielding no results. However, given the many variations of the story and how it is nearly impossible to trace to the original, it's hard to really know for sure. Needless to say, true or not, should any of us receive a frightening image with a gruesome warning, we're generally tempted to pass it on, just to be safe, because you never know.